Yeah, th this is the standard right here of a lateral cervical. And again, looking at a patient from the side, um, because we a lot of the times we want to see multiple views of a specific area of the spine because it could look perfectly straight up and down. Um, looking at somebody from the front, then you look at it from the side and you could see what we call reversal of the curve. So yeah, like Dr. Bryant was saying, this is textbook normal. We want a natural bend in the neck uh, for weight distribution, gravity, all those things come into play. And, and, and the biggest thing that we see in the office, and I think a lot of chiropractic, chiropractic offices see this, and, and it's due to work posture. It's due to, to posture changes, especially these last three years. Um, a lot of the demographic working from home, they're changing how they're sitting, how they're working, looking down at their phone. So the primary area we want to focus on in the neck is C5 and C6. So right in through here, C5 and C6, these are the joints of the backside right in through here. So those little tiny gaps right there kind of work together with each one of these vertebrae so that they can move in a fluid motion. What happens is on this backside, every time we, um, a patient or anyone is looking down, say looking down at their phone, or if there's been an old whiplash injury where their neck is whipped back and forth in a car accident or any type of injury for that matter. But this is the area a lot of the times because that's the fulcrum. When we look down that bending point right in through here is at C5 and C6. So what we're gonna do is show you a common um, problem that we see here in the office. And one thing we wanna kind of reiterate is, is, is the pain factor. I mean, are we chasing pain? The answer is no but we wanna see where the area of stress is in the spine, target that area and promote the proper motion into those joints. So a lot of the, um, you know, and, and believe it or not, we don't like to hear it in the office, but we hear a lot of self cracking, um, self popping of the neck. Well, the truth is these joints in the neck move a specific angle. And, and we know that with each patient that comes in with this diagnostic X-ray, because that angle could change from patient to patient. We're not gonna adjust everyone the same. So what we'll do is I'll pull up the patient that we had that just went through a care plan. Bear with me here. Dr. Bryant, what's the most common area of the neck that you feel um, is, is the greatest area that we work with here? Yep. So it's either going to be like you were talking about that C5, C6, or we have a lot of headache patients that are having problems with the upper portions. So that C1, C2 area and how that uh, works together with the base of the skull. So we've got a couple of muscles that hook on from the base of our skull, and it goes down to C1, C2, which those are those top two vertebrae up there. And those are the, the primary headache factors. But along with that, we're also seeing what you're talking about, and you're, you're gonna elaborate a little bit more on this, but we're seeing what's happening with this C5 and C6 area. Uh, after traumas or, or whatever it might be. Definitely. And what we'll do is we'll break down the history of this patient. This patient is a 34-year-old male, um, grew up playing sports, very active, weightlifting, was a collegiate athlete as well, but comes into the office with um, chronic neck pain, pain going down into the left shoulder blade, um, and then just overall stiffness in the morning that usually gets better throughout the day with movement. So what we want to target again is that area at C5 and C6. So if you can remember from that initial x-ray, the textbook normal, we had a little bit of what we call a C curve and through there. And Dr. Bryant, you can see that cursor, right? Yep, I can see the cursor. Okay. Absolutely. And so if we kind of zoom in a little bit through here at C5 and C6, again, the joints of the spine are back here. And you can see the difference between this space here and this one right here. And then we can correlate that to the front side. You can see this deformity happening within the bone. This is a sign of stress, just like a callus on your hand. If you're a weightlifter, a guitar player, your body's gonna lay down thicker, more rigid bone to protect and splint this backside. And then what happens over time is that joint binds up, it gets stiff, it doesn't move properly. And then we see this straight up and down curve. This is something that's very common, but um, one thing we want to reiterate is this patient went through a care plan, is on a maintenance schedule now, and is is nearly pain free. Now we're not pain chasers. We don't, you know, we don't chase pain or symptoms. They give us clues. But regardless, ninety five percent of the patients that walk into our office are looking for some holistic pain relief. But long story short, 
Um, this patient survived, was very successful throughout his chiropractic care plan and continues to, to preach the good word of chiropractic and is a, a very great patient of ours. So absolutely. And, and the, and the biggest takeaway for, for a neck like this is like you're saying, this is a 34 year old. This person would have never thought that their, their neck would have looked like that because exactly. the symptoms that they were having are, they are major symptoms. I mean, pain in the neck and then pain down the arm are major symptoms. They're nothing, they're nothing fun. They're nothing to play with. But I guarantee you that that 34-year-old, and I've spoken to him before too, he did not think that he had that going on. So, you know, how does this play into further on? Now that we know this, we know the place that we have to continually check up on and maintain because the reason why that gets that way is because of the traumas, you know, the, he played sports, he got hit all the time in football and, and played baseball and lifted weights. So lots of pressure on him as well, but we have to make sure that we continually monitor that area of the spine when he comes in, because with that extra bony growth, you're not going to have as much room to move. I mean, it's, it's pretty common sense. If you got extra bones going on within your neck, probably not going to promote movement. It's going to limit movement. It's going to cause more restrictions within your neck. So with that, it's going to make it a little bit more easier for that portion of his neck to become locked up. It, it just it just is what it is. It's there. But the great thing is, is that by taking the x-ray, now we know. And so now we know that every time that person comes in, that's where we got to check. Because if you let that if you let that joint get locked up for, you know, a period of time again, you're going to see more arthritis going on within that neck because it's not moving well. So the best prevention method that we have and anybody has is to keep this moving. So a lot of people will go, well, I exercise and things like that. That's wonderful. All those things help out a ton. But with a specific joint like that, if it becomes locked up, you can be flexible as can be, but that joint right there can still be locked up and still be progressing um, in the osteoarthritis category because what's happening is, and people say, well, I'm still flexible, everything's good. Well, what's happening is, is the vertebrae above it and below it are helping out it's 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 compensating for what's going on there it's kind of giving you a false sense of you know everything's good um so at our office not only looking we're not only looking at this in the short term like this person getting them out of pain and and trying to you know make it where they have a better over overall quality of life at that point but we're also looking in the future okay hey so you're 34 you got a lot of life life to live we got to make sure that that thing stays exactly where it's at and doesn't get worse. And how do we do that? We continue to make sure that it is moving well and also trying to promote, like Dr. Egan was talking about earlier, trying to promote some of that curve back in there because any millimeter of difference in that curve, getting that curve to come back just a touch will take a ton of pressure off of those vertebrae going smashing right down on each other. So just now when it comes to putting curves back, it, we're not guaranteeing a full all the way curve going back. Most of the time that doesn't happen. And a lot of times it doesn't, but any millimeter of difference for that thing to start creeping back into the, the correct position makes a ton of difference on that patient, uh, you know, in the short term and the long term. Well, and you're right. And I'm in, I remember um, having a conversation with this patient on, you know, am I doomed pretty much? You know, I had no idea that it was this bad. I know I'm in a lot of pain. Um, the good news is, is, is you made a couple of good points on a couple of things. So we'll talk about arthritis here in a second. But this area that we're promoting that proper motion into, we want to, the key word we want to use is function. We want to improve the function of that joint right in through there so that it can move and groove how it's supposed to and again this patient is no longer in pain 